Welcome back to Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. I thought we were actually going to go to the tree. Maybe we'll end up there, but for now we're going to the side of it. Sigmund holds on, the chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. Sigmund's sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy and finds him strong and fearless. And so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. Luck is not on their side. They're captured and Sigir has them buried alive. Look at that up there. What is that, exactly? Some strange wooden structure built out of the top of the mountain. Oh, this leads to the tree. But if that leads to the tree, then what's down here? Definitely important, but not yet. That just loops around. Is that Sigmund's sword?
Yeah, I can't touch that until we actually get all the shards. So three of them. A king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn. And it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? It's so strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary, inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrving. I love those snowy peaks. Ah, oh, so windy up here. Things look strange in here. Oh. Who's there? This torch does not go far. I'm here for the trials. Like when we first met, remember? Herver disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. 
She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. I can hear him. Herever calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Truth. Oh, Jesus. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy. Chief. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. 
You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. Going. There's more. You're tired, but you have to keep going. There's still more. There's always more. No surprise, then, his father was abusive, I suppose. Yeah, we've mostly only heard Senua talk about um, really liking her mother. I don't think she's ever mentioned her father before for the most part, except the only time which stuck in my mind, which made me suspect that the father was a piece of shit, was when Senua mentioned that they, uh, their father always made sure that they never left and that they were kept indoors pretty much all the time. strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older, and where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. was wrong with something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not. Another one of those perspective things. Look at it at the right angle and focus. Inside a house and goes around the walls. 
I once saw the death moon appear at a farm. And first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. That is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware, because there will be death in that house. So what exactly did I do with this last one? I opened up the storeway, but that just takes me back to where I've been before. Did it do something else? Right, so there's the doorway. There's something else that's different as well. Can't reach that ladder up there, can I? No. I feel like I probably need to get up there somehow. Oh, that one over there has complete ladder, although it's <laughs> it's missing some of the rungs. But how do I get over there? Oh, right. Another one of those, you have to like open a door and then undo one of them. And it looks like that gave me this platform here. I didn't even notice that the platform had gone missing. Can probably repair the bridge from up here. Yes. Well, these have changed now. They didn't used to have those. Or they weren't shining before if they did. Now they look more like they used to look with Val Robin. Is that coming towards me? It looks like it. Damn, I gotta 
to him again. The gr rot grew a little bit. See any light at all? Oh, light. Sanua! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just... people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Really disturbing to think of how many people in history have been mentally ill and blamed for things by, I guess, superstitious people and killed or hurt for it. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to try to get the other two shards. <laughs>